Hello everyone, how's it going and welcome to today's Wild Rift video. In today's guide, we're going to be taking a look at the exemplar of Demacia Jarvan. Jarvan is a very versatile champion. He can be built for any situation, whether it's a full damage one-shot build or a tanky bruiser build to help your team. Jarvan can do it all. Jarvan brings a lot of crowd control and lockdown to the table. His early combo flag and drag can be used for early ganks to get a huge advantage and his lockdown from his ultimate is huge during team fights especially if you can find the backline carries Taking a quick look through the build, as a bruiser, Jarvan wants to build both damage and tank items. So he could be a frontline tank for his team when he's using his combos and his ultima to lock down enemy targets, but also try and deal a lot of damage at the same time. So he can actually be a threat and try and kill them backline carries at the same time. Black Cleaver being our first item is a very strong item for Jarvan. Gives us maximum health, attack damage, and ability haste. All great base stats for Jarvan. The Sundra passive, meaning dealing physical damage from either our abilities or our auto attacks to a champion reduces their armor by percentage for a few seconds and this can stack up to six times so this not only will help Jarvan deal more damage but it'll also help the rest of your team deal damage if they deal physical damage because reducing the armor is going to be very very important especially against some backline carries if you're going to have anyone else on your team that deals physical damage and the rage passing means that dealing physical damage will grant us a little bit of movement speed and kills will grant us even more movement speed this is quite nice for Jarvan because as a melee champion sometimes you can get kited quite easily by ranged champions so again that little bit of extra movement speed when you're using your flag and drag or when you're auto attacking will just help you stick um onto the enemy champion to try and deal as much damage as possible steris gauge being our second item gives us 400 maximum health which is a lot of health for Jarvan as a second item but also you get a bonus attack damage based on your uh, base attack damage 50% of your base attack damage will then be added as bonus attack damage so we get a little bit of AD and health from this item and a lifeline passive means that if we do drop below 35% health we will get a shield equal to 75% of our bonus health which is quite nice with these two items both black cleaver and steric gauge both give you health so it's going to scale quite well uh this is going to be really good for when you're you know in your ultimate when you're going to be you know clumped up against a lot of enemy champions they're all going to be dealing damage to you because you're right in their face so having that lifeline passive having the extra tenacity as well and also the extra size is going to be quite nice because you can still do damage but also you can be a little bit of an annoying tank at the same time as for for the boots you have two options for your boots you can either go for play to still camps if you're against a lot of ad champions or mercury treads if you're against a lot of ap champions or against a lot of crowd control because this will give you tenacity your boots in chart most of the time i would suggest stasis this works quite well with your ultima because you can use your ultima and then use your stasis and then the enemies are going to be trapped inside your ultima and you're going to be invulnerable so you can't take any damage at all but other options you have gargle stone plate because you're going to be right in amongst it you know there's always going to be three or more enemy champions around you to gain that um be you know huge of an extra shield uh, and i think that's pretty much it they're the only two uh, options that you have for your boots in charm then we go into more tankier items items like mail they give us a lot of maximum health and also armor we also have the thorns passive which means that any attacks that are going to come towards us are going to be reflected back towards them and they're going to take more damage but the most important thing is they're going to be applied by grievous wounds as well and grievous wounds will reduce the effectiveness of healing and regeneration effects which is quite nice for Jarvan. you don't really want to go for the damage version more to remind them because it's quite difficult sometimes and most of the time because you're a tank and because you can easily get onto the back line with your combos then you're going to want to try and get thorns male to be a little bit tankier and also they're going to be attacking you so you're going to apply grievous wounds most of the time and then if you mobilize an enemy champion whether it's a slow from your second ability or if it's a flag and drag and knock up from your combo they're going to get applied by even more grievous wounds so overall a very great item for Jarvan. spirit visage is a really good magic resist item for Jarvan. um not only does it give a lot of great base stats as you can see there the blessed passive though increases all healing healing and shielding effects on you by 30 percent so your second ability actually gives you a shield and slows in by enemy champions which you're going to use most of the time when you're right next to them after you use your flag and drag combo so using your second ability is going to give you more of a shield with spirit visage and you're going to be a little bit more tankier against ap damage and as a 
final item, we have Amaran's Twin Guard. Very strong uh, tank item at the moment in the current meta. A lot of armor, a lot of magic resist. And we can also increase the armor and magic resist by 30% if we stay in combat for a few seconds, for about five seconds. That's all we need to do. Stay in combat for five seconds. We gain size, we gain tenacity, and we gain increased armor and magic resist for a few seconds. So very, very powerful item that will give Jarvan a lot of tank stats. There are a few situational items as well. You know, Randu and Zoman's really good against any critical strike damage that might be coming your way. Death Stance is a bit more of a carry item if you want to go for a more carry orientated armor item can be very good to go death stance or something like guardian angel is also very good because as i mentioned you can very easily jump onto the back line and sometimes you might go a little bit too far so resurrecting from guardian angel can be quite nice as for the runes conqueror is very very strong you have loads of different ways to stack conqueror your flag and drag will stack two conqueror stacks straight away then you also have your auto attacks you have your ultimate there's those different ways that you can stack conqueror which means you're going to be dealing more damage and then when you're at that maximum conqueror stacks you're going to be getting a little bit more healing which is going to help Jarvan a lot sustain especially in them huge massive team fights Triumph means you're going to be dealing more damage to enemy champions than when they're going to be low on health. And also you're going to be restoring 10% of your missing health every single time you get a takedown. This is so big for Joven because he likes to jump in. He likes to get takedowns, which also counts towards assists. So even if you don't get the kill, you're still going to get the healing. And then by the time you get that takedown, you can look to try and flag and drag away if you really want to. So very, very powerful rune uh, for Joven. Bone plating, again, very, very strong, especially if you're going to be jumping in onto the back line. You're going to block quite a lot of attacks and abilities from the enemy character but you can also swap this rune around for perseverance which is also very strong if you're against a lot of crowd control because it will give you a little bit of armor and magic resist when you do get hit by crowd control so two very good rune choices there for you to take on Jarvan. and as a final rune we have mastermind allowing us to deal true damage to epic monsters which is the dragon baron and rift herald just helps us take them down quicker and also helps us maybe take a smite still or two and then for our summer spells we're going to be running flash and smite since we're going to be in the jungle that's everything for the build though let's head on to the abilities first up let's take a look at jarvan's passive which is martial cadence the first attack against an enemy deals bonus physical damage equal to percentage of their current health and it does have a bit of a cooldown per unique champion so you can't trigger this effect multiple times on the same champion but you can auto attack different champions during that time period and you'll still be able to deal that bonus physical damage you can see there it says a percentage of their current health this means that Jarvan's really really good against tanks and champions that want to build a lot of health because the more health the enemy champions deal the build the more damage you're going to be dealing with this passive so you'll see a little bit of an indicator underneath a champion when you auto attack them this will indicate the duration you have before you can use the passive again you see that little circle going around the target dummy that's the duration i have left of my passive and then i can auto attack that champion and trigger the passive again if i auto attack the same champion multiple times unfortunately it doesn't trigger the passive multiple times but you could use this on multiple champions so if i auto attack all three of these target dummies it will trigger the passive multiple Multiple times. So when you're jumping into team fights with Jarvan, make sure you attack multiple champions to try and proc your passive as much as possible and spread your damage so you can deal more damage. Jarvan's first ability is Dragon Strike. He extends his lance, dealing physical damage and reducing the armor of enemies hit by a percentage for a few seconds. Now, if the lance connects with Demacian Standard, which is Jarvan's third ability, it will pull Jarvan towards the Demacian Standard location, knocking enemies up in its path for 0.75 seconds. So with his first oh ability, God. it's quite a decent poke tool, to be honest. You can use this at quite a far range, as you can see here. You can also use this very effectively in the jungle because it will reduce the jungle monster's armor at the same time so all you do is use the ability and you can see there there's a little armor reduction sign next to the target dummy and that means that i have the little bit of armor reduction that means my auto attacks are going to deal more damage every single time this can be missed though so you do need to be a little bit careful you know it does have a bit of a range but it can be missed so you have to make sure that you use this first ability effectively because reducing the armor of enemy champions on top of black cleaver is going to be very important for you to deal a lot of damage as it mentions there as well if you connect with demarcian standard which is the third ability it will knock up champions in his path so if i use my third oh my ability God. just behind this target dummy and then i use my first ability afterwards as you can see i go through and i connect towards the flag and i drag myself towards the flag knocking enemies in its path 
Now, this could be very, very good for lots of things. A lot of mobility can be used with this ability. But you, you have to be very, very careful because your first ability can miss. You can land a knock-up, but you can also land a knock-up and then not reduce the armor of enemy champions. So if I use my flag here, if I use my first ability right on the edge, I can reduce the armor here, but sometimes you might miss. Sometimes you might do it on the side a little, and you might miss the armor uh, reduction when you're using your first ability. So it's actually really important to try and get as close as possible so you can use your third ability, use your first ability, and then knock up multiple enemy champions and also reduce their armor at the same time. Golden Ages is Jarvan's second ability. It's a bit of a tank spell for Jarvan. It unleashes an aura that slows surrounding enemies by percentage for up to two seconds and grants him a shield that absorbs damage for a few seconds. And the more champions you hit with your second ability, the more damage you're going to uh, absolve, which is going to be very important. And it also scales with your maximum health. All it is, pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. You use your self ability, third ability, second ability, and there you go. You get a huge massive shield depending on how many champions you hit. So as it mentions, I mean, it's got quite a big a, a radius as well, as you can see. It has a very, very big radius. So you can see how much the radius is. It's very, very big. So you can use this from quite far away. But most of the time, you want to use this after you use your flag and drag combo. But as you can see there, I get a little bit of a shield if I hit one target. But if I hit multiple targets with my second ability, then my shield is going to be even bigger. So the more champions you hit with your second ability, the more champions you're going to slow, which is going to make it easier for you to do damage. But also the bigger shield that you're going to get so you can absorb more damage. Jarvan's third ability is the Marcian Standard. You have a passive which gives you attack speed. You just get attack speed when you level up this ability once. Really, really powerful as the first ability for Jarvan when clearing through the jungle because you're going to be giving yourself attack speed from the passive, but also give you attack speed from the active. Which the active is you throw a Demarcian standard that deals a little bit of magic damage and remains in place for a few seconds, granting nearby ally champions attack speed which is very, very important for Jarvan because you can use this to push towers very, very quickly, especially down in the dual lane. When you're pushing towers or when you're trying to deal damage to objectives, make sure you put your Demacian Standard down nearby and it will give your nearby ally champions attack speed, which will allow you to take objectives quicker, whether that be towers or even dragons or even any epic objectives. Tapping this ability while near Demacian Standard will cast a dragon strike towards it. It just means you don't have to tap the third ability and the first ability. You can just tap the third ability twice and that will cast your combo, your basic combo, which is flag and drag. The area of the third ability is quite big, to be honest with you. Uh, you can see here if I just spawn a um ally dummy uh you'll be able to see that you know i get i can give him like a little bit of extra attack speed can't really see it itself but you can see the flag there and the little duration around the flag will so show you how much longer the flag has before and it expires so it deals a little bit of damage not a crazy amount of damage because it's magic damage but one of the main reasons why you use your flag is because of the combo with your second ability in the first ability now your flag and drag combo as i mentioned already is very very important not only will you be able to engage with your flag really easily you can just use your flag at range your third ability and it's really easy to just tap your third ability again you don't have to tap down the first ability you can just go third ability into third ability and there you go you could be so so mobile around the map and use this multiple times this is really good for getting around the map whether it's through the jungle trying to clear jungle camps quicker or whether it's trying to get over walls to try and escape or to try and engage you can also combo this with flash as well this is a very cool little combo that you can do with Jarvan. so say that the target dummy is a little bit too far away i can flag and drag and then flash and my flash will actually work as an extended range for my drag that means that i can knock up enemy dummies after using flag and drag i'll show you again so i use my flag and my first ability and then i use my flash this is a great engage tool because you can combo this with your ultimate straight afterwards and this will catch a lot of enemies off guards and Jarvan's ultimate is Cataclysm. He heroically leaps to an enemy champion, dealing a lot of physical damage to nearby enemies and creating an arena of terrain around them for a few seconds. You can cast this ability again after using it to collapse the ter terrain if you're looking to try and escape or looking to try and chase down enemy champions. Now, there's loads of, loads of really cool ways that you can use this ultimate. You could use this ultimate at the start of your combo and then look to use your third ability 
ability and your first ability to try and escape away from the terrain or you could use it right at the end you could use it right at the end to lock someone down after you use your flag and drag but you can see here the, the you know the radius is quite big you can see here that i don't have enough range i might have enough range to trap these two together yeah as you can see you could trap two enemies or even more enemies together and it will create a terrain around them now this can be easily countered by any sort of dash or flash or anything like that so if there's ever a situation where you trap someone in your ultimate and say for example i chop these two target dummies and then one of them's a lucian and they dash away and i want to try and focus the lucian i can just tap the ability again and there you go the terrain drops down so i use my ultimate use my ultimate again and it collapses the terrain so it means that we can get onto the enemy champions quicker because the ultimate still does a lot of damage even if you don't trap an enemy champion the damage that you can deal can be very very important for you now as i mentioned you can use this ultimate many different ways you can use your third ability and your first ability and then ultimate straight afterwards and do an insane massive combo to deal a lot of damage you can see 720 damage there is quite a lot or you could use your ultimate and just use your third ability and your first ability to get away so you just engage with your ultimate and then look to just flag and drag away and that will trap the enemy champions there for a few seconds another cool way to use it and you can also combo this with stasis as well so you can use your ultimate and then use stasis which means the terrain is still going to be up but you're going to be invulnerable that means you're not going to be taking any damage but the enemy champions are still going to be trapped Taking a look at a few combos for Jarvan, I already showed you pretty much the basic combo, which is the third ability and the first ability. This is called the flag and drag. Very, very simple combo that you will be using a lot. This can be used very, very effectively as early as level two. So you can try and take one buff or one jungle camp and then look to try and gank as early as level two. This combo is so, so important because you're going to be knocking up enemy champions. You're going to be very, very mobile around the map take jungle camps quicker and you need to make sure that you master this combo and you try and land the combo as much as possible it's important to actually aim your third ability because if you just tap the ability sometimes sometimes the flag doesn't go behind them and especially because the enemy champions will be running away from you sometimes you might miss it if you just tap the third ability twice so i recommend when walking up to lane you actually aim your third ability and try and predict where they're going to move so if the enemy champions are looking to move away i can aim the flag and drag over here and i could just look to try and bait them to try and walk away so it can be used as a zoning tool at the same time but it's very very important to try and aim this combo to try and get into uh, try and knock up the enemy champions and guarantee that knock up every single time Time. now the ultimate combo for javan is as follows so you use your flag and drag which i already mentioned you then use your ultimate ultimate followed by your auto attack and then your second ability so you just flag drag ultimate auto attack second ability that is your perfect engage ultimates your perfect engage combo you're using your flag and drag which is going to reduce the enemy's armor you're then reducing the armor with your auto attacks and your abilities through black cleaver and then your ultimate is going to trap everyone in there and then you're going to have the shield from the second ability which can allow you to stay in that terrain and deal even more damage so overall very very nice combos but again you can use them in many different ways it doesn't matter how you use your combos just make sure you use your right combos at the right time to either jump in or jump out of team fights onto the leveling order with jarvan at level one when clearing through the jungle you always want to go for your third ability the reason being is this will give you passive attack speed in the early game when clearing through the jungle especially with that first camp you'll do a little bit of magic damage but you also get more attack speed when you stand near the flag so when you're clearing through the jungle make sure you use your flag near you so you can gain that extra little bit of attack speed from not only the passive of the third ability but also from the active then you want to go for your second ability this will allow you to get early ganks off if you really want to you can go for level two cheese ganks and try and surprise the enemy champions or just overall this will help you clear through the jungle a lot quicker because you'll reduce the armor of the jungle monsters and your flag and drag combo can help you easily jump from camp to camp then as your third ability you obviously want to get your second ability to make sure that you have all abilities available to you then the ability that you want to max 
first which is really really important you want to max your first ability and the reason why you max your first ability is this reduces the cooldown of your uh, of the ability so you can use the third ability and first ability the flag and drag combo more often it also gives you more damage which is going to be great and it's one of the Javan's main damage tools because you get to reduce the armor so reducing the cooldown is going to be very important increase the damage is going to help you clear through that jungle a lot quicker then we go for our third ability as our second max our third ability gives us more damage and also gives us extra attack speed to not only ourselves but also to nearby ally champions which is going to be very important especially in later stages of the game when you're using your flag and drag to try and get into team fights or when you're trying to use your flag to try and take their major objectives and then as your last level you obviously want to go for your second ability this second ability isn't really that important that's why we leave it until last the shield is still going to be very very strong even at level one and just leveling up the skill doesn't really offer too much for Jarvan. and obviously make sure that you level up your ultimate when possible but that's everything for Jarvan now i'm going to head into a gameplay and tell you all some tips and tricks with Jarvan and how to master Jarvan in the jungle so hopefully you enjoy sit back relax and i'll see you all in just a second all right on to the gameplay we go with Jarvan the fourth very very easy champion to play very cool champion to play as well uh, we're gonna be starting off over at the red buff you don't really need blue buff with Jarvan his mana in the early game isn't really too much of a problem or anything like that um, the extra damage that you get from the red buff is normally a lot more important now when playing Jarvan in the early game you always want to try and look for early ganks try and look in the lanes try and realize you know look at your lanes and think to yourself okay what are the lanes that i can gank this lane and one lane that i can gank quite a bit is most likely dual lane because there is a blitz crank support that blitz crank support can definitely set me up for a lot of success down in the duo lane uh because you know the hook into the flag and drag is a nice chain cc combo uh, that could do quite a lot and you can see here their bot lane is pushing up very very far um, and i was thinking to myself i was like do i look for a bot lane gank here do i try and full clear through the jungle because all you have to do is clear two camps to get level two to be fair you only need to clear one and look at this i see that they're fighting down in the bot lane get the flag and drag which unfortunately misses but i get the flash to guarantee the kill there which unfortunately went on to blitz crank but still again realizing that my lane was pushed up there well, their, uh, their lane was really pushed up, uh, which meant that I was able to walk up and I was able to easily get the uh, the first blood there onto the Blitz Crank. And now this makes oh us have an advantage down in the bot side because Thresh went back to base, which means we can steal away the red buff because we still have Smite, which gives us even an even bigger of an advantage uh, because we take away the first blood. We then take away the, um, the enemy's blue buff and we take away the rift scholar so really really good early game again showing the power of Jarvan the fourth in the early stages of the game the red buff did uh, the blue buff did well did try and get taken for the riven on the other side but look at this i'm already a level ahead on on the riven the riven can't really do too much because i'm a level ahead and the riven wasn't able to clear through my blue buff in time and this is where you have to kind of think to yourself and understand the positioning and where the enemy jungler could be the enemy jungler knew that i took the red uh, the blue buff so instead of going for the raptors on the red side of my map and just doing a full clear i was thinking to myself i was like okay the riven's seen that i took her blue uh, i took her blue buff she's most likely going to try and do the same thing and try and take my blue buff so instead of going for raptors which is what you normally do for a full clear for Jarvan in the jungle if you want to go for level five as soon as possible i was like okay instead of that i'm just going to go straight up to the um, top side of the map and i'm going to see where riven is i saw that the scuttle crab got taken so i was like okay the riven is most likely going to be on my blue buff so i flag and drag over the wall try and get vision try and see how low the blue buff is and as you saw the riven was there i was one level ahead of the riven because i got first blood down the bot lane i took the enemy blue buff and i took scuttle crab so overall very very nice to just kind of understand uh where you could where the enemy champions could be again looking for a bot lane gank as soon as they look for a fight set up perfectly by my team there and we're able to get two more kills another beautiful gank there again setting up perfectly A again this is kind of just understanding that my bot lane is the lane that i need to play around this game mid lane i can't really set up too many ganks because oriana is a pretty safe champion and just gonna 
sit back and farm. Top lane, I don't really have a lot of ganking set up because Gwen doesn't offer any crowd control or anything like that. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to focus on the bot lane this game. That's the only lane that I'm going to focus on. I'm going to try and get my team ahead. Yes, they have a, a Thresh and a Zyre, which can be quite difficult to gank. But when they're pushed up that far, and when I have a Blitzcrank on my team, it's very easy to just flag and drag over the wall. Use my ultimate. And I know the Thresh didn't have flash as well because Thresh used a flash before. So I was like, cool. Uh, it's a pretty easy gank for me. Um, so we got another kill, another assist, one kill, zero deaths, and two assists for this early game. Level seven already with Jarvan in the jungle. And I'm looking again. I'm looking down the bot lane. It's like, look, the the, the enemy bot lane is not is not realizing, is not understanding that I can come again if I want to. But no, they back away. Okay, not really sure what happened there. Uh, I think my something bugged out there with my video but i'm back anyway see yeah, anyway as i was saying um i was gonna go for the bot lane gank because i saw that the enemy uh bot lane was really really pushed up but then at the same time i knew the blitz crank was a little bit far behind so i didn't go for it at all i'm just training against the oriana here just trying to put a little bit of pressure down because i know i can win the trade in the 1v1 i know the dragon's coming up in seven seconds so i'm in the bot side here I'm just playing around this objective and we can really play around the bliss crank hook bliss crank is a, a really really good champion to try and play around hooks especially in the early stages of the game he does get a little bit caught out and he has to use the proto belt to escape so a few cooldowns already gone there for the side of uh bliss crank but oriana is very very low on health maybe j4 nice there we go the jace gets a kill there which is really really nice unfortunately though i think i'm gonna die here yeah, I think I'm going to die here. I, I probably should have realized that Jace was quite low on health. I should have just tried to... Oh, okay, Jace. I should have just tried to flag and drag away there, to be honest. I don't think I needed to try and fight the Riven after trying to tower dive the Oriana there. The Oriana kill was quite nice. I caught her out with my flag and drag. Unfortunately, she flashed away from my ultimate, which is something you could do against Jarvan, by the way, is you can dodge the damage of the ultimate if you flash at the perfect time you can see i used my ultimate there but oriana flashed at the perfect time and she didn't take any damage from my ultimate at all which is something very difficult to do against Jarvan. but when done can be really really effective because you can dodge all the damage uh which is quite nice riven there uh, blitzcrank landed the hook on riven but then un <laughs> unfortunately kind of killed himself for it as well we're going to jump over the wall here. We'll ultimate onto the Riven so she can't escape at all. And now we're going to take the objectives. So again, it's just... You could do so much with Jarvan. Like, I've done so much in this game. And it's only been six minutes. I've ganked lanes. I've gone for skirmishes. I've gone for tower dives. I'm jumping over walls. This The, the flag and drag combo that you have for Jarvan is one of the most effective combos in the game. If not... You, I mean, I said in the game, I was going to say in the early game, but probably one of the most effective combos in the game. Uh, I'll be totally honest with you. I mean, in the early game, it's definitely the strongest. Um, but, you know, in terms of the rest of the game, like it probably still going to be effective in the middle and late stages of the game as well, because you could just get over walls. You can prepare for ganks. There's so much you can do. So I realized that the uh, the Blitzcrank was roaming up here towards the Rift Tail, which is really nice for the support, by the way. When you take a, the Dragon, it's really nice as a support to try and roam up towards Rift Tail because you're not really down the, needed down in bot lane. You can see the Thresh is kind of AFK down the bot lane there as the support. Kaisa could just clear up the lane if, if she wants to and then get the kill onto the Oriana. This, this Blitzcrank is playing very, very well. He's landing hooks. He's playing well during the lane phase. He's doing really well at setting up plays. You know, went for the mid lane play. Proto belt forward into the gank, which is really, really nice. I think Kais is getting towered over bot lane, but to be honest, it's completely worth it. We get two charges here of the mid lane tower. We're actually going to get two towers here in the mid lane. We take the Rift Held. We take the Dragon. Yes, Kaiser died for it bot lane because of the tower dive, but to be honest, I think that's worth it. I mean, as an AD carry, I, uh, I can understand how that feels. It's like you're in bot lane by yourself. You're trying to defend the tower. There's nothing really you can do when you're two versus one and you try and tower dive, but still, either way. Very, very nice overall. Riven's trying to jump on top of me here, but I have my, yeah, I have my flag and drag here. Uh, that's another way you could use flag and drag as well, is you could just use your flag and drag to just escape if you really want to. Look for invade, try and steal enemy buffs, and then use your flag and drag to escape. Exactly what I did there. Again, I stole the Riven's blue buff, tried to steal 
the uh, Gromp away as well. Wasn't able to. So I just flag and drag away. Very, very easy enough. Black Cleaver into Steros Gauge. Your pretty standard combo here for Jarvan. Gives you a lot of health. Gives you a lot of tankiness. Does a lot. I'm just going to clear the red buffer now. I probably could go down to bot lane here. But I think they're just dead already. And there's not really much I can do to help, to help them. This crank trying to escape here. I'm using my second ability to slow down the Zaya, so she can't. Oh, okay. That was a little bit too much. Oh, I mean, it worked out. I, I mean, it worked out. I guess. I don't know how it worked out, but it worked out. Oh, this, oh, this thresh is so low on health. I don't think there's anything to do. All the river flashes forward. I think the Jace is dead. Oh, yep, the Jace is dead. Maybe I can look for a play here, but I think the river. Oh no. The Riven failed the flash over the dash over the wall. And that's going to be another kill there. My lifeline passive prox. Dodged away the hook from the Thresh. EQ again. And then Kaiser follows up to get another kill. So it's actually a really nice play from Blitzcrank. Hooking the Zaya underneath tower. And flashing away from her damage. Was actually really, really smart to be fair. Um, and then Jace unfortunately died afterwards. But again, because your flag and drag has such a low cooldown as well. It's like a six second cooldown you can use it multiple times during during little skirmishes like that and you can see my first ability has like a three second cooldown my third ability has a, a little bit of a cooldown like five to five to seven seconds i'm not really too sure on the exact cooldown of my third ability but it means you can use it multiple times you can use it to jump in and then when you jump in you do a little bit of damage with your auto attacks and your ultimate then you can look to jump out again in this game, I went for Death Dance because I know that I'm going to be more of a carry this game. So I want like a little bit more damage. I don't really want to go for like tanky items here. Uh, and I'm against a lot of AD champions, you know, Riven, Jax, Zaya. this game. They're going to be the main carries. They, I, I am against Soriana, so I do need a little bit of magic resist this game, but I don't need it this early on. And Death Dance works quite well with, you know, runes like Triumph because you can get a lot of healing when you get a takedown. And with Jarvan, most of the time you're going to get a lot of takedowns because your flag, when you give attack speed over to allies, that will actually count as an assist. So when you use your flag and drag to try and get kills and try and get assists, even if you even if you don't attack the enemy champion, that flag giving your team attack speed will actually work as assist because technically it's a buff. It's a bit like a shield, you know, if you're a support and if you land a shield, um, then you can easily do that. So we can see that there's a little bit of a skirmish happening here i'm kind of looking for a flank here jumping over the wall trying to look for a flank trying to look for a high value target i see the oriana out of position i use the ultimate i do take get rid of the ultimate straight away and kite backwards because i know the rest of my team can follow up but there we go perfect engage there onto the oriana i do die for it i probably didn't need to walk up there to be honest with you um i probably could have just easily have just backed off and just gone towards the dragon um but yeah it's always finding the right opportunities with Jarvan. you know i saw oriana out of position oriana oriana had to use her flash to escape my ultimate but to be fair it was completely worth it you know the ult the flash was used by oriana it meant that the rest of my team could follow up and do a lot of damage to oriana and eventually kill her off and i was still able to lock you know the rest of them down i'm telling my team to reset here um because this dragon is actually kind of risky because their jungler um you know is still up and can come back up and steal it you can see the ribbon is back up and available um so it was a bit of a risky dragon to be honest with you i don't think they should have taken dragon there because river could have easily tried to walk to the dragon there smite steal it and then we lose the dragon maybe river loses her life for it but probably be worth it for her at this point because they're so far behind but they did well to burst down the dragon quick enough Get the reset back to base and then go towards trying to finish off this game so just came through the jungle here there's not really much more that i could do um i need to do at this stage of the game three two and twelve you will get a lot of assists with jarvan um that's kind of a normal thing with jarvan nothing else really uh to say that you know jarvan's not really going to get a lot of kills unless you go for like the full damage one shot build which is kind of an interesting build it has been quite popular quite recently uh in wild rift you know you go for items like um ghost blade dusk blades um lord dominic's regards uh, you, you get a lot of damage with the build to be honest with you like a lot a lot of damage um so i'm going for my boots upgrade here i'm just gonna wait for a little bit of gold i need to wait for 10 gold to get my uh stasis enchant i'm just pinging my team just to make sure they go back but stasis is a great enchant for Jarvan because 
with stasis for Jarvan, you can just use your ultimate and then use stasis and you lock any everyone in your ultimate and then you can just use stasis to become invulnerable. Unfortunately, my Blitzcrank does die, even though I did ping them to go back. I think they just went a little bit too over-aggressive there. They were a little bit overconfident. But with Zyra in the bot lane, I don't think there's any th any threat of them taking Baron right now. Use a flag and drag to go over to the wall for Thresh. Use my ultimate. And there we go. Nice, easy kill there. So using the, using the vision that we had very, very effectively, just flag and drag over the wall. I even flag and drag flash onto this Oriana, but she has flash to escape. If she didn't have flash there, I probably would have been able to kill her. That's a cool little combo that you can use with Jarvan. If you feel like a champion is too far away to hit your knockup with your flag and drag, you can just use your flash and extend the range of your flag and drag. So you, it, you can guarantee a knockup on champions that are further away. Unfortunately, I didn't get the kill there, but yeah. Playing around Vision is super important for Jarvan because if you play around Vision really, really well, you can just use your flag and drag to surprise an enemy over the wall and then can be followed up for the rest of the team. You know, you can follow it up for the, you know, the Jace there and also the Kaiser following up from the damage was really, really nice. You can see that we're not really going for the... Uh, I, I kind of messed up the combo here. <laughs> My mistake. Um, you can see that we're not really looking for the Baron because we don't really want to risk the Baron. The Baron is a super risky objective to take. So we're just trying to push multiple lanes at the moment, trying to create pressure in lanes rather than taking Baron. Because the thing is with Baron is that when you take Baron, you do lose armor and magic resist, which is really, really scary. As you can see, we're a little bit low on health. We do need to back off here because the enemy team is going to get, yeah, the enemy team is going to get a few kills here, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, like I said, the, the Baron actually reduces your armor and magic resist and you do take a lot of damage from Baron. So if, an, if the enemy jungler is up, then it's very, very risky to try and, you know, try and um, try and take it, basically. You can see here, I'm trying to use my flag and drag to escape. <laughs> this flag and drag has such a low cooldown. It's so effective. Watch this as well. I'm going to look to go back in here with my flag and drag, knock up the Riven, lock her down, and then we could just kill the Riven anyway. Like, <laughs> Jarvan is such an annoying champion to deal with. I, I stole away the blue buff. I used my flag and drag to escape twice away from the Riven, which, by the way, Riven is a super mobile champion as well at the same time. Then I wait for my cooldowns. I see the Gwen's in a little bit of trouble, trouble. I flag and drag back in, and we get the kill. Like, it's absolutely insane what you can do with Jarvan. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's absolutely crazy. Um, but yeah, Dragon's up in a few seconds. Um, we need, still need a little bit more gold for Twin Guard. Yeah, the Zai, oh my god. The Zai just gets completely one-shot there. Uh, one thing I'm actually not doing with Java, which is a bit of a tip to get yourself quicker on the map, is you can use Flag and Drag out of base, uh, and it actually gets you out on the map quicker. Uh, my team's actually taking Baron here, which is super risky because I'm not there. I'm setting up for this Elder Dragon. I think they're going to take it, though. Yeah, I mean, it's super risky. The River could definitely look for a steal there, but... I was looking for the uh, the dragon because we can secure the triple dragons. I think that's a lot more important than trying to go for the um, trying to go for the Baron. But hey, maybe that's just me. Flag and drag into locking down the Oriana and the Riven here. And look, this is the best way to do it. You flag and drag into your ultimate, and then you use stasis to keep yourself alive. Alive. Flag and drag into the flash onto the Riven gets the knock up onto Riven and gets us a nice few other kills. And I think that's going to be the end of this game. The mid lane wave is pushing in. Jarvan's pushing up in top lane. We have the Baron. We have a few cannon minions because you can use off one more final flag and drag to finish off this game. I cannot count how many times I use flag and drag this game. Uh, but again, early game, mid game, late game, such a core combo with Jarvan that you need to master and you need to make sure that you use it correctly because if you use it correctly then you can easily carry the team uh, like I did in this game. 6, 2 and 15 in this game. Very curious how much damage I did in this game. 19,000 damage. It's not too bad. I mean Jace obviously did quite a lot of damage. I mean we did more damage than like a Kaiser and a Gwen so we did really really well this game. Jace also had a pretty good performance. So my team overall, especially the Blitzcrank, also had a um, a pretty good performance. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, Jarvan guide and the gameplay. Hopefully you all learned a thing or two. As always, take care, and I'll see you all in the next wider video. Peace.